Let's turn today to John's Gospel, chapter 18, and verse 25. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. This is in the court of the high priest where Jesus was being tried. And the people standing around, Simon Peter said therefore to him, You are not also one of them. One of his disciples, are you? He denied it. This was the second time. The first time, the slave girl at the door had asked him, and he had denied himself. And here, another one of the slaves, who was a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, asked him this question the third time, and he denied again. First, one of those who was standing nearby asked him. Then a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off asked him, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? He suspected this was the one who had cut off his relative's ear, and Peter denied again, verse 27, for the third time. And immediately a cock crowed. There was the fulfillment of what Jesus said. And we know from the Gospel of Luke that Peter went out and wept bitterly. That was his preparation for apostleship, to recognize that nothing good dwelt in his flesh, to recognize that even when he was absolutely sincere to glorify God, he was unable to fulfill God's will for his life, that he was so weak, his spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Whether it is in the garden of Gethsemane to pray, or in the courtyard of the high priest to be a witness for Christ, the spirit was willing, but the flesh is weak. And in many temptations and many situations, this is the lesson that God seeks to teach us. We are sincere, we really want to stand, but we fall. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. And thus we recognize that nothing good dwells in our flesh and we cling to God for help and by grace that God gives us, we can be kept from sin. God gives His grace to the humble and this is why humility is the secret of all victory over sin. If we humble ourselves, God gives us grace. And when we are under grace, Romans 6.14 says, sin will not have dominion over us. We will have power to overcome the flesh. But Peter had to learn that. He was cocksure. He was absolutely certain that he wouldn't deny the Lord. He was certain that he was better than everybody else. He said, even if all deny you, I will not deny you. I'm the best of the lot. All that pride and arrogance, spiritual pride, had to be shattered. He had to be brought down to the dust. And when he came down to the dust, then the Lord could lift him up again. And God spoke to him through a cock crowing and God's word being fulfilled. And Jesus turned and looked at Peter, we says at that time. We read at that time. And... He repented. They led Jesus, therefore, verse 28, from Caiaphas into the praetorium. That is the governor's official residence. And it was early in the morning, and they themselves did not enter into the praetorium in order that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. There is something very humorous about this. They didn't think that crucifying the Son of God would defile them, but they were afraid to enter a physical building called the praetorium because it was the governor's residence lest they defile themselves. This is the result of being religious but not spiritual. One can strain at gnats and swallow camels. Here is an example of straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. On one side, they didn't want to defile themselves by entering the governor's residence because it was a Gentile court. On the other side, they were swallowing camels by crucifying the Son of God. They wanted to eat the Passover. And the real Passover, they didn't have any light on. It's exactly how even a lot of Christians are today. They go through a lot of religious activity, pious religious activity. But the more important matters of the law, to love God with all one's heart, soul and strength, not to love money, to love your neighbor and forgive and be merciful, they've forgotten all that. Straining at gnats and swallowing at swallowing camels. Let's learn a lesson from this. For human nature has not changed through the centuries. Pilate therefore went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. People called Jesus many, many names throughout his life. He was called Beelzebub, the prince of demons. He was called insane, that he had a demon, many other things. Here's another one of those names people gave him. They called him a gluttonous man, a wine-bibber. Another one here, verse 30, an evildoer. An evildoer, the one who never sinned in his whole life, who never did anything but good, was called an evildoer. 
That is how much even religious people can misunderstand genuine men and women of God. And that's why we should not be discouraged when people call us evildoers. If we live with a clear conscience before God, God is the one who finally judges us. Pilate therefore said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. That the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. The Jews were permitted to stone people to death. In fact, they wanted to stone a woman caught in adultery, but they couldn't find something in the law to stone Jesus. But they wanted to get rid of him. And they couldn't find something to stone him, but that was because Jesus' word had to be fulfilled, that he had to be lifted up like the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness on a cross. And that type of death was only given by the Romans. The Jews never crucified people. The Romans did that. And so there a scripture had to be fulfilled that Jesus had to hang on a tree and take our curse. Verse 33, Pilate therefore entered again into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, You are the king of the Jews? He asked him a question. And Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative or did others tell you about me? Look at the dignity there was in Jesus Christ when he stood before Pilate. He wasn't seeking any favors from him. He stood there as a true man of God. And he said, Are you saying this on your own initiative or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest delivered you up to me. What have you done? And look at these wonderful words of Jesus. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting that I might not be delivered up to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul writing to Timothy says, he charges him in the presence of God. 1 Timothy 6.13 I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things. And Christ Jesus, who testified the good confession before Pontius Pilate. You see, he's telling Timothy to run away, verse 10, from the love of money, 1 Timothy 6.10, and from everything of the world which people chase after. O man of God, flee these things, verse 11. And then he speaks of the good confession that Jesus made before Pontius Pilate in 1 Timothy 6.13. Here is that confession. My kingdom is not of this world. That's a wonderful confession. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. And I would probably fight too. But the fact that I don't fight proves that my kingdom is not of this world. When people fight for something earthly, what does it prove? It proves their kingdom is of this world. When believers fight over property or money, what do they prove? That they are not heavenly, they are earthly. The mark of a man whose kingdom is not of this world, is that he fights for nothing in this world. When people fight for positions, even in a church, to be a leader or an elder or a bishop or something like that and go to court and fight before heathen judges or seek to get votes for themselves and things like that, what are they proving thereby? Whoever they may be, they are proving that their kingdom is of this world. Jesus never fought for anything in this world, not even a position. When they wanted to make him a king, he ran away. The sad thing is that Christians have not been gripped by this. They love this world, they belong to this world, they are occupied with this world and hope to go to heaven when they die. They'll be disappointed. No, if we are heavenly, we live as heavenly people now. This is the good confession that Jesus made before Pontius Pilate. And Paul tells Timothy, always remember that. Remember you are to follow him. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king, but not of this world. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. His kingdom is a kingdom in which he bears witness to the truth. And everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. That's clear. That those who are sincere and honest, they will always hear the voice of the Lord and come to Jesus. Wherever they are, whatever religion they may be in, they will finally come to Christ and be saved through Jesus' death on Calvary and his resurrection, if they are really sincere. There is no other way of salvation apart from Christ himself and his death on the cross. There is no other name except the name of Jesus given under heaven, whereby anyone in the world of any religion of any human being can be saved, only in the name of Jesus Christ. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And he didn't want an answer. 
He was not interested. He would not have been willing to accept it even if he got an answer. And when he said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to him, I find no guilt in him. There was a man who was a heathen who had more light than the religious Jewish priests who preached from their Bibles. Pilate longed to set him free. He said, you have a custom that I should release someone for you at the Passover. There was a man who longed to set Jesus free. Do you wish then that I release for you the king of the Jews? And therefore they cried out again saying, not this man but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. There we see the condition of the heart of man, that they wanted a robber rather than the son of God. Birds of a feather flocked together. They were robbers themselves. Jesus said to them, you have made my father's house into a den of robbers. They were there making money in the name of religion. They were robbers in God's eyes. And Jesus exposed them and so they chose a robber instead of Jesus. They said, release Barabbas. And Pilate therefore took Jesus, chapter 19, verse 1, and scourged him. Pilate was a compromiser. He was weak. He knew the truth, but he didn't have the courage to stand for it. And therefore he falls into the same category as those who wanted to crucify Jesus. There are two types of evil people in the world. Those who deliberately do evil and those who just yield to those who do evil. We find the chief priest and Pilate representing these two categories. Whichever category we fall into, we go astray. Let's stand for the truth like Jesus did and glorify God our Father.